Tuesday. Glad to be back here and talking to some really interesting folks. Over here on my far right is Kirsten Boileau. Boileau, she explained how to pronounce it. <laughs> Michael Labate and Joelle Lebon. And what we're going to talk about here is something that SAP recognized needed to be done and did it. That's all I'm going to tell you because I'm going to let them fill in the rest of it. All right, so you're with SAP. Yes, I am. Tell us a little bit of the background about what I just teased. <laughs> well, we've been doing uh, social selling now for about six years, um, and the program has evolved over those six years. We've you know, trained 14,000 people. We have 250 trainers around the world. But also, in that time that we've been developing this program, analytics is a huge part of it, right? And being able to prove that ROI. And uh, looking at just one aspect of ROI, say pipeline and revenue, is, is great as an initial marker. But you, it, you need to take it further. And so that's really where we started to look deeper into the analytics around um, the way our social sellers were engaging in uh, engaging the customers and what kind of impact was that having on the sales cycle. So social selling is fascinating in and of itself, but there's also kind of a bigger picture here where you guys can take that and apply things to concepts that apply for selling all over the word you guys have used with me as indices. Michael, take it from here. Where, where did you guys go next? Sure. So buying behavior has changed. We're taking our sellers sales and marketing, and we're teaching them something new. And that's uncomfortable. You have to come up with a, me a mechanism to show the value of why your behavior should change. It's not enough to just say this is the new way. You have to show them, not tell them, right? So we looked at our data, and we found pattern. Not only are modern selling behaviors more productive, they're actually more productive by a great degree. In some cases, we're seeing plus four or five percentage points, greater conversion on pipeline value, and 300% larger deal sizes when social behaviors are used in the selling motion. So, Joel is an academic. He's at Johns Hopkins. He's only been there like three weeks. He's still learning where the, the, all the restrooms are in the various buildings. <laughs> Tell me how you got involved in this, and there was some research going to be involved in building the data that they needed to work with. Yes, yeah, so that's true. I'm an academic, but I'm a salesperson trapped in an academic brain <laughs> because I was with sales before. I was with Xerox, and then I started to teach, and I loved it, and then I started to do, to do research, and I loved it. And uh, what was interesting about their endeavor and their uh, challenge and their journey, they wanted to uh, understand at SAP and ASAP as soon as possible, uh, the impact of uh, the key indices that they build uh, on sales performance from the social selling behaviors of their salespeople. So this is where I actually joined the team to uh, deep dive uh, into the data that they gave me. And the, the data set is, is broad and it's deep. It's uh, two years, uh, 2017 and 2018, of social selling activities and behaviors uh, factored into key indices uh, from 54 countries and over 10,000 people. And uh, so I was just trying to see if there was a relationship between the social selling behaviors and activities of the key account managers and general business uh, people and what was the impact on their indices and performance. And guess what? There's an impact, and a huge impact, not always where you might expect, which was very inter interesting. Absolutely. And uh, we also saw that uh, the uh, social selling uh, index from LinkedIn uh, uh, Navigator that you have on uh, build your brand, uh, find people, engage with insights, and build relationship, uh, they don't actually uh, weigh the same way in terms of key indices. So now we can tell people this is where you need to focus on uh, to actually uh, sell better, uh, especially for key account managers in terms of keep looking for people and not just you know, nurturing your relationship. You still need to have new people in your pipeline. It's more like... A, uh, people pipeline, that just sales pipeline, and for general business uh, 
people, uh, you actually need to uh, build your brand and, 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 and build relationship with the people that, that you have because this is very important to expand your network. Those results were a little bit counterintuitive, but somehow it tells everyone how to focus on what matters. And this is why also maybe research matters. Okay, so Kirsten, now you've got this, this intel to work with. He's told you what matters. Yep. How did you guys go about applying it? Well, we just found out about it on Thursday, so we haven't <laughs> applied it yet. <laughs> how, uh, yes, so I suppose I should say, how will you go about applying it? So actually, we, we revealed it to our team on Monday morning. Uh, we had a team meeting, and um, my head of training and enablement, Marco Kai, he, uh, he got really excited. He's like, oh, I can see how we can leverage this to, to really do role-based training. Um, that's very focused on what's going to be important for our, that's going to draw, you know, be more successful for them. Uh, if they know that they, can, they only need to focus on these two elements, not that they don't have to focus on the others, but that those are the two that are going to be most impactful for them, I can change the training up to really focus on those pieces, and and we can you know make sure that they embrace those behaviors um, as a way of uh, really drawing even more ROI out of the program. And so, Michael, then, as a sales enablement professional, how do you then think, I realize you haven't had as much time to digest this, but how will you be thinking then about, okay, this is how I can empower my sellers with this knowledge. How are they going to actually go out and apply it to the field? So I think where we are right now <clears throat> is important to understand where we will go. Where we are today is that we have insights that are live in a dashboard that give us insight down to about the country level. What that means, I mean, this is a global enterprise. So we can see data across pipeline, uh, value and volume, deal size, lost and discontinued, the standard measures of measuring people in sales. And we can see those with indices down to the country level. Where we would like to go is bring it from the country down into the sales manager's performance review. So to give you an idea, when we look around, we. Like anything else, uh, when you're trying to look at transformation, you need a metaphor. The metaphor that we chose was, think about the way financial markets are measured. The S&P 500 is an index. You can measure categories, like the financial category, right, or consumer goods, et cetera, against how it measures compared to the 13-week moving average of the S&P 500. So some investors might move money out if the financial category is doing good or bad, depends on their perspective. We're trying to apply that to people. So today we can apply that to the country, meaning we can look at all data global, we can look at it by region, EMEA, we can look at it down to country like Germany. Tomorrow and in the future, in this program, we'd like to, for the next year, work on bringing it down to the actual sales manager and their team. So what might that look like? If you have, and I'll pay homage to my organization, we're a German organization, so I'll say, uh, let's use the three of us. If Kirsten is managing a sales team in Dusseldorf, I'm managing a sales team in Munich, and Joel is managing a sales team in Waldorf. We're all selling the same stuff into the same market, so economic conditions, everything held constant, it's pretty much equal. Without the indices, Let's assume for the moment in the role play that I'm actually doing pretty well. I'm getting to the winner's circle. And it's the end of the quarter and I'm going to get to the winner's circle. So I kind of let my foot off the gas and kind of coast through because I've exceeded quota and I've been recognized for it. That's today. Tomorrow. Same role play. Now I go into my review. I'm getting to the winner's circle. I do exceed quota, but I don't let my foot off the gas because of this. Sales manager says, well, did you know Munich or Dusseldorf and, and, and Waldorf are actually at or above the index and you're performing below the index for these particular measures, value conversion of pipeline or value or deal size. And that's where we'd like to explore this research into practice over the next year. One of the interesting things about this conference, and, and one of the things I've heard a lot, is about measurement and about figuring out new ways to, to measure things. And that's one of the exciting things about technology that has a lot to do with it. One of the things that's cool, though, is this conference is very open. You guys shared a lot of this this morning in a big session. You know, lots of people could see it. As an academic, 
and somebody that obviously and something you put a ton of work in. How satisfying is that to get to present this at a conference like this and, and see it received by your peers? Well, of course, it's it's very nice uh, to uh, be part of this uh, group and, and, and team to to try to in in academia we we try to understand better so we can teach better. But to try to understand, uh, you need to know what you want to understand. And what I think what Kirsten and Michael did try to understand is very powerful. So especially the concept of the indices. In finance, we use indices to describe the market. So we better understand the market, and if we do better or not better than the market. In marketing, the job of a marketing manager is to bring the market, which is outside the company, inside the company, explain to everyone how we need to go to the market. Usually in sales and in sales performance, we capture sales performance through sales quota, but it is at the individual level. With the indices, you can better capture the dynamics, average of a market, and tells everyone if they are doing better or not within their own ecosystem, which is much nicer to capture the complexity of the market, yet that complexity is outside, and now they can bring it inside. So you do a better job at knowing what you are doing. So this is why research is important. You just know a little bit better what you are doing, and if you know what you are doing, and you are good at it, you have fun. <laughs> Lots of paradigms shifted at this conference, and I'm sure this is another one of those things where probably people were watching this and there were some light bulbs that went off. Hey, wow, that's true. And you also have the data to support the theory as well. So, Kirsten, Michael, Joel, thank you for joining us on the coverage desk. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Fascinating stuff, more fascinating stuff coming up this afternoon. If you see these folks, ask them about it uh, around the conference. If you're watching us in the live streaming, we'll have more interviews coming up from the coverage desk later on this afternoon.